My name's Janan Alani and I'm an artist. I was born um, in 1966 in the north of Iraq in a town called Kirkuk and um, I left Iraq in 1980 and moved to Britain. We left just as tensions were rising and very soon after we left the Iran-Iraq war started. Janan Al-Ani works with photography, film and video and has a long-standing interest in the power of testimony and the documentary tradition, be it through intimate recollections of absence and loss or the explanation of more official accounts of historic events. She studied fine art at the B.M. Shaw School of Art and graduated with an M.A. in photography from the Royal College of Art in 1997. She is currently a senior research fellow at the University of the Arts London. A notable earlier work is entitled One and Two, made in 1996. This piece is a fiber-based silver gelatin print, dry-mounted on cotton rag museum board. About the work, she said, I decided to try and make a piece of work that said something about this idea, that costume or dress can represent an entire group of people or culture. In much of my work, I use my family as the performers. One of the reasons I use them, particularly in the context of my ideas about anthropological photography, relates to the fact that my mother is Irish and my father Iraqi. So the family embodies a kind of cultural mixing which I wanted to preserve in this work. An ambiguity and sense of unfixed identity that reflects, to some extent, the methods of the Orientalist painters who often use European models dressed as Oriental women. I wanted to use models who represented various stages of Arabness, or Muslimness, or Europeanness. In the first image, the woman appears in ordinary Western dress, and in the second image, by placing apparently Oriental costumes on them, the viewer begins to interpret the identity of the women quite differently. The costumes themselves are part reality and part fiction. Some of them are genuine, while others were bought from tourist shops in the Middle East, so they represent a kind of fictional Oriental dress. Shadow Sites 2, created in 2011, is part of her project, The Aesthetics of Disappearance, A Land Without People. In her words, the actual term shadow site is borrowed from the field of aerial archaeology and refers to the practice of surveying landscapes from their air at dawn or dusk when the raking light serves to reveal low-lying features on the ground, details that would otherwise remain invisible. This work has many inspirations, such as Edward Steichen's World War I reconnaissance photography. In her words, strikingly beautiful images of landscapes obliterated by shelling and crisscrossed by trenches, but abstracted to such a degree as to have become exquisite and minimal works of art. Other inspirations are the work of Margaret Cox, specifically in unearthing mass graves dug by Serbian military in an attempt to hide over 8,000 Bosniak Muslim. Cox, a forensic anthropologist, links sudden surges of blue butterflies to mass graves, as they are attracted to the mugwort able to grow in the now nutrient-rich soil. This discovery reinforced to Al-Ani, bodies could never truly hide in the landscape. Shadow Sites 2 shows aerial views of landscapes through a zooming and fading of stills meant to replicate wartime drone footage. The formal aspects of Shadow Sites 2 were inspired by Gulf War documentation and the use of bird's eye view. This angle allows any remaining life on the ground to be obscured, creating what appear to be empty, humanless landscapes, even if that's not the case. In this piece, land fades into different land, both past and present, and the marks of humans made on the landscape reveal themselves, echoing Al-Ani's thought that bodies or their effect on their environment can never truly hide in a landscape. 